available at audible.com. In the Shadow of Evil, the Seal Strike Series, Book 4, by M. L. Strong, narrated by Edison McDaniels. The ridge ahead was slightly higher than the last two Doc had traversed. He realized, as he moved ever northward, that he was approaching the steady rise that would become the mountain range some ten miles away. He'd been patrolling at a ground-eating pace, not expecting any threats until he was a mile or two from the selected observation point. Just the same, he kept his rifle pointed ahead and swiveled the weapon wherever his eyes roamed. Old habits die hard. The forest was thicker than the overhead images implied. Just enough sunlight reached the forest floor to stimulate a carpet of smaller trees and plants. This was especially the case in and near the ravines and small valleys in between the ridges. As Doc moved, he felt the air change. He knew it was the weather approaching and thanked the gods for the disturbance. Bad weather was a seal's best friend. Frogmen were selected and then trained to operate in crappy environments and to ignore the cold, heat, wet, and pain associated with them. He knew his potential adversaries guarding the estate would not be so well prepared. It was an edge, and any edge was a good thing when it came to combat. Doc paused and checked the time. It was only 4.30, but already the light was fading. It wasn't dark enough yet to don the night vision goggles, but it was getting close to that time. The night vision was another advantage he had over the men roaming out there, seeking intruders. He had an HK MP5 SD, a silenced 9mm submachine gun strapped across his back, and after another 20 minutes of walking, he stopped to reconfigure. The long gun was now useless for patrolling purposes. When it was light enough to see, Doc expected contact at a distance. His rifle was the best answer, allowing him to reach out and tap a threat far away. But it was too dark now, so he switched weapons, pulling the submachine gun off his back and replacing it with a deer rifle. Avaya had asked for and was given the shotgun. It was the only protection she had, but it also doubled as a diversion device. Doc had made sure she had plenty of 12-gauge rounds and ran through the weapon's operating features just before she dropped him on the side of the road. Her diversion wasn't so critical it was a mission-critical event, but it would help to confuse the enemy and perhaps cause them to divide their strength as they searched to the west for the source of the firing. Any little bit helped. Doc jumped up and down a little to check that his rifle was secure before advancing north along the spine of the ridge. He was one ridge west of his final objective, but he wanted to observe this spot from an adjacent terrain feature, especially since anyone with basic map reading skills could see that the ridge ended in a defined high point, overlooking the estate's main gate. Doc knew Anders Ambrano wouldn't ignore this key piece of real estate. Fifteen minutes later, Doc squatted down low to inspect his destination. It was almost dark enough for the night vision goggles, but not quite. Doc realized this was what old-school SEALs dealt with in the wars before high-tech satellites, aerial intelligence support, and unmanned vehicles. In his old life, he'd have professionals located far away from the battlefield, telling him exactly where the bad guys were. Tonight, it was old-school all the way. He spent a good ten minutes listening and watching. If he craned his neck, he could just make out the lights that defined the Zambrano estate to his left. For a moment, he reconsidered his plan. He closed his eyes and brought the map up in his mind. The ridge he was on tapered down gradually from where he was down to the bowl where the estate was located. He confirmed he was on the high ground now and that it was too far away with too many trees in his line of sight between his position and the target. Doc sighed. It was what it was. The best spot was the spot with the highest risk and the highest probability of detection, or worse, engagement. He checked his watch and began to descend into the deep ravine that defined the gap between the two ridges. He was wary, placing his feet carefully and frequently pausing his movements to listen and look. He'd originally planned to intercept the last ridge further away and patrol up its spine, but he'd modified his plan. He would aim for the end of the ridge, the high knob. Despite the increasing cold, Doc was sweating. It felt good. Seamus revved and cycled the single-engine power plane and checked all the gauges and instruments. He was going to fly the mission without the emergency transponder activated. He'd memorized the simple compass heading and times for each leg at a fixed airspeed. It was the way pilots originally navigated, and it worked, but only if the pilot was disciplined. 
He heard Matt and Stavros entering the caravan through the open cargo door, but continued his checks. It was getting darker by the minute, and by the time Seamus began to taxi, it would be as dark as night. Available at audible.com.